Hi everyone, this is Sarah Fezio. Earlier this week, I was asked to do a video on how I use Liquitex pouring medium to make a painting. Now, in front of me you can see some of my setup. Um, first of all, you're going to need quite a bit of time for this painting to dry. You're not going to be able to move it for quite some time, so keep that in mind. That's the first thing you need to know. Uh, you may not be able to move it for several hours. I don't usually move mine for at least six hours. Your setup, this is the product we're going to be using. It's called Liquitex Pouring Medium. And on the back it says it's permanent mixed with Liquitex Professional Soft Body Acrylic Color. We're actually going to be using Liquitex inks or golden soft body. Do not mix rapidly. Um, do not mix with oils. Ideal for pouring puddles and acrylic sheets. And it dries clear. So that's a little bit about the product. As you can see, it's high gloss. It's transparent. It's very fluid. When it comes out of the bottle, it's extremely runny, like a liquid. And it is halfway between a finish, which would be a varnish, and preparation, which would be gesso, which makes sense because this is actually the medium that holds the paint that you put onto the canvas. So hopefully, hopefully you can see that. I'm not sure. We have autofocus going, but that's what these little symbols mean. So let's talk about the setup. In order to get the best pour, if you don't want it to move on the canvas, you need a level surface. So what I've done is I have a bucket of water. You can easily pick these up at someplace like Walmart or Target. This one was like 10 bucks. I've had it for quite a while, but I did price them recently in the store to see if they had a larger one and some styrofoam. Now the styrofoam you're going to need, you can cut, but as you see the thickness is the same throughout. So if you do use styrofoam, I highly suggest getting a pre-made machine tool, I, I guess I should say, a styrofoam ice chest or styrofoam pieces. Because it doesn't matter if the cut is clean on the end as long as the thickness is accurate. Now this was a lid to one of the styrofoam um, ice chests that actually mills medicines for one of the members of my family. And what I did was I just took the lid, turned it upside down, and placed it in the water. So the larger your surface area, the more steady it's going to be. You could use a smaller bucket or a taller piece, but it's not going to be as sturdy. So you place your styrofoam on there. The other thing you're going to need is a level. Now, this level also I bought at Walmart for about $5. You could probably buy a more expensive level, but this one is very light and I didn't want it to affect the uh, measurement when I put it on my styrofoam. So if I place it on the styrofoam, you can see the bubble is just about in the middle. And if I turn it sideways, we could probably lay it flat, you can see again it's just about in the middle. So now that I have my styrofoam ready to go, I filled it with water. I filled it with enough water so that the edge of the canvas will stick out over my bucket, hopefully. If not, I'll have to add more water. And I do that with this nifty container, which was a laundry detergent container that I simply cut to make it an easy uh, pitcher that I can use just for paint. I was going to put paint brushes in it, but because it has a hole down here, it's not going to work unless maybe I put a sponge or something down there in the bottom. But I'm going to use it for water for now. Now, my canvas is going to be 12 by 16. And as you can see, I have supported it with cardboard on the back. Now, you do this because if your canvas isn't stretched tight enough, then it could sag in the middle. So I simply put some cardboard in the back to level the canvas to give it some support. And if I turn it sideways, you don't want to see, sometimes you can see the cardboard 
sticking up, which I do not. So I did a good job making that. We don't want any styrofoam on there. It gets wet, it gets everywhere. Now, you're going to want to test it. I can already tell it's not level. I don't think it's level. It's not. So you're going to try to set it in the center and hope for it to be level. Again, not level. That's more level. And this process can take quite a bit of time. But before I do that, there's one other thing I want to show you. Because that will take a while. I've taken a piece of plastic sheeting because this will be very messy. And I cut a hole roughly the size of the roughly the size of my piece of styrofoam. It will still drip off, but hopefully that will give it some stability. Now let's try this again. The cardboard inside is not as level as I would have liked it to be, which may be part of the problem, but we'll see. You don't want any of the plastic touching your canvas because it will stick. So I'm going to push this down. Hopefully it will not move too much. I don't think it's level. Let's see what I can do. This part actually takes the longest. That looks better. And you're just going to move it until you're comfortable. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're not in a lab or anything like that, so. And we just try to get it in the middle as best we can. Now, I don't like the fact that it's touching the plastic. It will run down the sides. Keep that in mind. So I'm just going to adjust my plastic so that the canvas is in the middle of the bucket of water as best I can. The setup takes a long time. It's not like grab a canvas and let's go. Okay, so nothing's touching. It's fairly level. That way, good enough. I'm happy with that. It's not going to be perfect. It may drip into your water, so don't plan on using your bucket for anything else. But now that my canvas is ready to go, I'm going to need a few other things. I'm going to need some sort of container. These are just fruit cup containers that you can buy you know, fruit in liquid or gelatin or whatever. You buy these little containers. They could also hold applesauce. And you save them because that's what you can put your paint in. You can also use plastic red cups, larger cups, depending on what you're going to be, what the size of your canvas is, I suppose. So you'll also need your inks. And I think today I'm going to do a blue. So I have Turquoise Deep, which is a Liquitex ink, um, probably Thalo Green, which is a golden transparent uh, high flow acrylic, and maybe Thalo Blue. I'm not sure. I have them right here in case I change my mind or decide on something else. I also have some greens and I have cellulon blue. 
cerulean blue, however you want to say it. And it actually came this way. I didn't make a mess. It came out of the box all messy like that. So, and some white, and I also have Titan Buff, so, and some silver. I'm not sure. Okay, so basically, you want to have your stuff in hand, but that's kind of the idea I'm going to go with when I make this painting. So, you are going to want to work fast from this point on. You're going to want to have your inks handy. You're going to have your liquid pouring medium. You're going to need some plastic or vinyl gloves to do this, and you're going to need some stir sticks. Now, I use these little sticks because this is what I had handy. But uh, craft sticks would also work. So you need something to pour into, something to stir with. You need your ink high flow acrylic or you can use soft body acrylic but I don't have but black and white and I don't want to use those for this so I'm just going to go with this because this is what I used on the other two. You can try a heavy body paint but it will clump even though it doesn't look like it has and then you're going to need your pouring medium. I strongly suggest leaving the lid off the pouring medium in case you need to grab it and mix something else up while you're in the process of pouring your painting. Uh, also, the because the pouring medium it's kind of very tacky really quick, it will stick to things. So when you use your stirrer, leave it in the container because it can also help you pour. So I'm going to now pause and get my materials ready. Uh, to mix up and I will show that. So let me get that ready. I think I'm going to move some of this plastic so I have some workspace for you to see what I'm doing. Okay, so you can now see I removed some of the plastic so I have some work room. I'm wearing my gloves. My canvas is still pretty level. There's some more light. Maybe that will help. I'm not sure. And so I decided the colors I finally decided to go with were phthalo blue, cerulean blue, deep turquoise blue, silver, and white. And I want it to be a fairly lighter painting, so I'm going to mix more of the white. Now, I'm going to take my medium. Let's move this out of the way. I have half a bottle. Now, this is 32, um, I think it's 32 ounces. It says 946 milliliters on here, but I did an 11 by 14 and an 8 by 10 with half a bottle, and I could have probably used more on the 11 by 14. So you do need a lot of the Liquitex pouring medium to make your painting. So I'm going to start. I have to be very quick so I might not talk too much. Um, I'm going to pour the pouring medium in the cup. Hopefully you can see that. And that's probably that much. Now I'm going to squirt some white paint in there. That should be enough. You can also, and now I'm going to stir it. It's harder in this cup because it's solid and I can't tell how white the mixture is, but maybe you can tell. I'm not sure. The light is to the side, so. So I'm gonna mix this. I need to be pretty quick because it will start drying or firming up is probably a better way of putting it. It starts firming up. I'm not supposed to be storing this quickly, but I'm not shaking. I'm stirring. I can still see swirls of where the paint is. It's not mixed up completely. So I'm going to stir this. You're supposed to let it sit for a while for air bubbles to come out, but it would dry. Like, like it'll start solidifying. It won't be quite as liquid. So now we're going to do some... Um, 
Thalo Blue. This one you should be able to see better. As you can see, it's in there. I need another light. I think y'all can't see inside there very well with the cam. The camera only points down. Okay, so here's my Thalo Blue. I'm stirring it around. I'm going to get another cup and I'm going to put some silver and this is the ink so I'm using the eyedropper maybe four or five eyedroppers full should be plenty and I'm going to stir it around I need to work faster because it does set quickly the silver doesn't want to mix quite as easily who knows this may turn out to be an awesome looking painting or it may be like oh my gosh what was I thinking and there's something in my white something fell in there I see that I don't want that in there okay silver it's gonna be sticky now I'm telling y'all it's so sticky you won't even you, you have no idea how sticky the stuff gets I mean it's really sticky so then we're gonna do some deep turquoise hopefully I have enough mixed to cover the whole canvas sufficiently but you'll see when I start pouring that you'll pour and you'll be like oh I have enough oh I'm good I'm good to go and then you're like oh no I need more I need more so you keep your medium handy with the lid off and then good that deep turquoise is going to be definitely a different color now these will all mix the other ones I did were all bright, but this is going to be more of a, almost a monochromatic blue painting. I'm not sure how that's going to look with the thalo blue, but we'll try it. And then I think I'm just going to pour more of the, sort, the lighter blue. And I'm almost out of medium, so I may have too much here. I may have just enough. I don't know if you can hear the sleet hitting the window outside, but it is sleeting. It's very cold today in the 20s. It's hot under the lights, though. Okay, so I'm ready to go. I'm ready to pour. We're going to start with the, the darker color first. So I'm going to start with the turquoise deep. I wasn't nervous when I did this by myself, but I am now. This is my first tutorial on YouTube. So I'm just going to pour it like this. I have a little bit left in there in case I need to add some someplace else. And then we're going to add the phthalo blue. Like so. Make sure you get around the edges. It will run off, but okay, I used almost all the phthalo blue. I'm going to use the other blue because this will start setting before, it seems like this will set before I get to the other ones. Now, these don't look quite so good together, but I'm hoping if I can get them to blend a little bit so this is basically all you do is just pour it and you hope that it turn it moves around the way you would like it to okay so now I'm gonna add some silver we'll see what this does we're just gonna add it in little spots 
it will level out. It should start flowing towards, and you can see already it's starting to bleed together, which is kind of what I want. And I haven't even added the white yet, so I definitely have room. And the white should lighten it up, but the white, you know, was the first one that I mixed, so it will be thicker. It was very runny when I squirted it into the container. This one, and then, of course, I have my little stick. And as you can see, it is definitely running down. It's going to run into the water. It won't mix with the water, but watch what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to pour it. This is why it's very messy. One of the things you can also do is um, I just want it to cover the whole canvas, but one of the things you can also do is paint your edges first. I mean, and I'm losing a lot of the medium, but you can see it's smearing together. The white really isn't running. It's getting all over my foam. Yeah, there's a lot of paint on this canvas. It will be very smooth, as you can see. Now, it may run because I moved it. I can't level it again. Now, this is where you need to have the paint on hand. You can see how much thicker it is when I poured it that time. I'm going to go back with my darker color and just kind of add some more in here. I mean, that, that's a nice looking purple color right there. In this corner, there's a very, um, I don't know if I like that, but I need to put some more in there anyway because it is not covering the entire thing. Let's see, what do I have left? And I can tell right now the way it's leaking that I need to move it back some. And I may even tilt it again and just get it to cover the sides. You can kind of, when it's this wet, you can kind of use your finger to bring it over the edge. Like so. I don't want any white canvas showing. Once it starts setting though, you can't really do this. You can, however, pull it with your finger and put it on there. That's another thing you can do if you don't like it. And as you can see, I have drips all over the place, which is okay. Let's see if it starts dripping to one side more than the other. That's another way you can tell. Okay. And I still have some white that I can use to pour. And I may want to pour some down here. I've got a large area of gray. We have more phthalo blue. There's no phthalo blue down here. And as you can see, it's moving a lot slower out of the container than it was. I'm not sure anyone's going to like this one. It looks kind of odd, but it will change. I will show you what it looks like after I'm done. It changes. It will continue to flow together. Then you start seeing things in your paintings. You can kind of smear the sides to try to cover them. It will drip down the side. I can tell the painting isn't even because it's all dripping off towards me which means it's heavier, so I'm going to move it over some more. It could also be that there's just more paint, too. But if I start going like this and moving it around, which I think I want to do, you can see the stuff I recently poured is moving more than the stuff I didn't. So it's very fluid. This stuff at the bottom is not really moving. Too bad. Looks sort of, and my fingers are kind of sticking to the canvas. I kind of like that. 
There's paint all in the water. I'll take the canvas off after it dries enough to show you. But I can see on this edge, it's kind of, um, there's not enough paint. So what I can do right here, I can see the canvas. I'm hoping that when this dries in the water, I'll be able to easily remove it. I'm not sure if that's gonna be the case or not, but I'm just putting a little bit right here. Just like that. Okay, I actually love that. To me, what I see now may be totally different. I see it sideways. I love what I see right now. Now I'm gonna take my finger, I'm gonna dip it in here. I'm just gonna touch, touch the sides. I don't want the sides to be blank. I want them to have some paint on them. Okay, and I have to put, sorry, I have to put my head in the shot. I can't see what's going on on the other side though. Oh well, we'll have to leave it like that. I might edit that part out. But I absolutely love this so far. It's leaning this way. It's flowing this way. I don't want it to flow that way. I want it to flow this way. I really like what I saw. So I need to move it over just a tad and see if that evens out. Where's my white? I have plenty of white left. I have extra white left. I don't need all this white. But as you can see, hopefully you can see, there is paint everywhere. There's, there's gonna be paint everywhere. Okay, again, check to make sure your plastic isn't showing on, isn't leaking on that side, or it's not touching your canvas on that side, all the way around. I really like this part, and it has flown the other way. This is why you can't always tell what it's going to look like until it is done and dry. And you can add little drops. They won't stay like that. It'll flow. Or they can just drip on their own. But I have plenty left. Now, it's too wet now. I mean, it's too dry now at this point for me to really use my fingers to do anything. But I can kind of guide it. But you'll see there's a color underneath and that'll mix in together. And then it should level back down. As long as it's not running too far one way or the other. And then I have just, my hands are getting very sticky because the stuff on my gloves is drying. And this stuff is barely pouring out here. But I really want that dark color down there. And then you just kind of play with it and you get it to how you like it. And that's the fun part. Because even when you think you have it the way you want it, it won't stay that way. <laughs> Not really. It's going to continue to run. As you can see, it'll run until it's off. So some of it's smooth. The stuff I haven't really touched, it's very smooth. Some of it is sharper. But you can see these dots I poured, they've already spread out. So you can go back. I actually kind of like that big silver piece there. But I may 
just kind of pour it like this. And the wetter stuff will run, the rest will not. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that and see. I think I'm happy. I want it, I want it to kind of lean this way. Now I do have plastic sheeting all on the ground, so you could probably hear that crackling. Actually, So you can work with it a little bit when it's wet. Now I'm just using my things here to kind of pour. I have a ton of white left. I didn't quite need that. So that was a probably, I don't know. I used five colors, five solo cups worth of color. Now you can actually reuse them. When it dries, you can actually peel it out of the cup. comes off of the plastic. Anything that drips into the onto the plastic sheeting. I didn't really like that. It's very messy, just so you know. Yeah, I don't really like this area over here. But that's okay. It's not going to be perfect. I still have silver. I'm, I have extra paint is what it is. And you can see there that because of the way the canvas is tilted, it's not going to run off the way I want it. Now, you can also do this, which I have done a few times, but here's the thing. That's my hands. This is what it looks like. Now, it kind of feels like the fingers are stiff. I would like to use my ink, but guess what? Have extra gloves handy so that you can take the dipper. If you need to, like I'm about to do, I would like this area darker. So I'm just gonna dip some of my paint there. That was straight from the bottle. That was that deep turquoise. You can see it looks almost black. And we'll dip some white a little bit more and we'll just kind of swirl it around. Hopefully it will take care of itself. You can also use I really don't like that but I'm going to smear it around. You can do this. Make it go off the edge. That part of the painting just looks kind of funny, just sticking out in the corner. But I know how to take care of that. Move 
it like this. Yeah, I don't really like that. So I just want it to go bye-bye. So now it's just a little bit in the corner, which I'm okay with. Or I can just pour it off like so. Bye-bye. Part I didn't like. There you go. Now, I like what I have. I want it to stay this way. Um, I know y'all can't see it, but where my fingers were, part of it just peeled off. My fingers are sticking together. Oh gosh, there's so much paint down there, but that's okay. Just going to put some on the side. I like that. Pretty much like that. I'm just going to leave it. I am going to leave it and fix that spot I messed up there. And there we go. I think we're done. And that's how you pour painting. You basically do it until you're satisfied with what you have. I want it to go. There is a ton of paint down there. You can't see it. There's a ton of paint in the water. It's all nasty looking. I'm not sure how I'm going to clean that up. That's an interesting development. So you can kind of watch it and it'll be very interesting to watch and see how it changes. It will still flow. You cannot move it. You cannot move this. Okay. It doesn't look like it's flowing. Some parts do, but it is. It is not. It is not at all done moving around. And up here, it's kind of thin. That's okay. I would strongly suggest framing it because there's just not that much paint on the edge. All the paint's on this edge because it ran that way, but that's okay. And I don't know what that is right there. Let me get a little bit of silver. Something's wrong there. I'm not sure what it is. There we go. So you can gently touch up anything. It, it definitely has some purple in it. I'm not sure if that's just an air bubble or what. better like that in there so you can play with it to some extent but the more you mess with it the less smooth it'll be all right so I think I'm done um, I have leftover paint I have quite a bit of leftover white that I'm not going to use I might use it I don't know how I don't know what that color is in there. But yeah, I like that. I think that's what I'll do. I actually did more uh, on this one than I have on others. I'm just going to let it sit. It's going to dry. It'll take several hours to dry. Then I'll show you what it looks like, which will probably be the final part of this video. And actually, if you can see, I have it on my hands. It's all over. It's all over the plastic I put down. 
it's really messy. It's not going to come off the styrofoam and that's going to mess up my weight so that'll mess up my balancing issue. So you should have extra styrofoam in handy. Um, it's super sticky. Hopefully you can hear that. Very, very sticky. I'm not going to touch my cups. I'm just going to let them sit there until I'm done. Uh, I'll take my gloves off. I'll put the lid on my inks. I'm going to check myself to see if I have anything on me. It doesn't come out of clothes. It's like having plastic embedded in your clothes. But I am going to take my gloves off now if I can get them off. It doesn't come off skin very well. I mean, literally, you have to peel it off of your skin. It's stuck. It's dry. And look, when I pull it, it peels off. So, you're not going to get it off your hands. It's all on my arm. But it peels off. So, anyhow, that's how you pour a painting. We'll see what it looks like after it's done moving and it sets. So I will see you soon with the results, the final results of the pour.